And now, Game Theory presents Newbies Try to Name Fortnite Emotes. Hey, Stephanie, you're a newbie. What would you name them? Wax on, wax off. Okay, next. Uh, discount tap dancing. <laughs> uh, ooh, the white guy at parties. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that I do that? Um, Whoa! What? Maybe we should move on to the next Disco one. never dies. Uh, like Thriller, but we didn't pay Michael Jackson for the rights. <laughs> <laughs> I totally see that one, actually. Oh, seriously? This one is literally just the Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The Bar Mitzvah. Oi! The Fiddler on the Roof Dance Audition, right? Sure. Yep, that's, yep, that's the one. Uh, a very select move from Gangnam Style. Oh, sexy Fortnite! Oh, 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 oh. Emote style. You should be able to recognize this one. Orange Shirt Kid! This is just Orange Shirt Kid. Newbie my foot. The Pogo Stick? The really boring game of hopscotch. <laughs> That's Unbalanced great. leg day? Uh, yeah, you were, you got, nailed it. Hold up, everyone, I have to pee! How'd I do? You did great. How'd I do? You, you got them all. <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. This has been Newbie Tries to Name Fortnite Heroes. Newbie! Yes, you're still a newbie! Internet, welcome to Game Theory, where this time I won't forget gravity. So for the eight of you who haven't been paying attention, Fortnite is still going strong. I mean, really, what competition does it even have at this point? It's like 2018 is the year the games industry just gave up. If halfway through the year your best games list contains a Mario sports title, well then, yikes! It is thin pickings, isn't it, Polygon? Especially when your praise for that game reads as follows, quote, the story mode isn't nearly as rich as its predecessors. For fans of local multiplayer, it still needs more options, and for competitive players, the roster lacks balance. Game of the year! 10 out of 10! Ugh, man, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Red Dead Redemption 2 can't come out soon enough. Hey, Betty. Hey, Ollie. It's Ollie's first time in the recording closet. He's seeing what his dad does. Talk to himself in a closet. Aren't you proud, little guy? Don't grow up and do this. Which leaves us all with Fortnite. Not that that's a bad thing or anything. For a game that's dedicated to repeating the same gameplay loop again and again and again, Fortnite has gone above and beyond by seeding in stories and mysteries for the community to solve. Something that, as a channel that specializes in video game mysteries, I really appreciate. This ain't a static battle arena, this is an ever-evolving world with a big mystery to solve each and every season. You remember that comment I talked about towards the end of Season 3? Well, it landed and then ushered in the big mystery of Season 4, The Visitor. If you paid enough attention to the details of the game throughout Season 4's 10 weeks, you had a story of the government drilling into the remains of the meteor, discovering a space pod hidden inside the crater Goku style, the reveal of this strange alien visitor, and then the creation of a rocket fueled by antimatter space stones called Hop Rocks. This rocket would then launch at the end of the season in an incredible live event more exciting than anything that's happened in video games for years. And I truly mean that. Well, it was exciting until you were killed by the guy that broke the in-game truce to watch the launch, and then broke the world record for solo kills. Some men just want to watch the world burn. The launch ended in epic fashion, creating a rift in space-time and ushering in the theme of Season 5, Worlds Collide. <laughs> oh, someone's getting grumpy. Here, you want your, you want your pacifier? Maybe a little bit? Yeah, there you go. There you go, buddy. But even the biggest game in the world right now can make a misstep. Or at least look like it made a misstep. Look around online and you'll see reviews of Season 5 to be less than stellar, with most of the complaints focused around the theme. These tears in space-time that opened up around the map started as an exciting addition, spitting out historic items like a viking ship, dinosaur bones, Easter Island Moai statue heads, and an Old West stagecoach. Between that and the main teaser image for the season being a Japanese kitsune mask, it seemed like things were headed for a season filled with time portals spitting out new ancient artifacts each and every week. But then, nothing happened. That was about it. Six weeks into the season when I record this, it's all amounted to a whole lot of nothing. I mean, sure, there were some big changes to the map, but for a season that had such a dramatic start and contains this ever-present reminder of its theme hanging in the sky in the form of the rift, a lot of people have been left cold by the World's Collide theme. It seemed, and continues to seem, like Epic isn't delivering on its big promise with that rocket launch. But 
Here's the thing. Everyone has misjudged this season. Season 5 contains, without question, the most ambitious Fortnite mystery yet. In fact, it's one of the most ambitious puzzles ever to be attempted by a video game ever. But the community hasn't realized it, and now we're all running out of time to put the pieces together. That means it's up to us, the theorists, to revitalize the search. We have at most three weeks to solve this thing before the seasons change again, so let's not waste any more time. Let me catch you up on where things are at and what we need to do next to solve the puzzle and in the process salvage Season 5. Like I mentioned earlier, the big climax to Season 4 was the rocket launch, in which the Visitor, an alien who arrived with Season 3's meteor, blasted off of Fortnite Island only to rip a hole through space. But that's not all that happened. Listen to this. As Team Rocket blasted off again, literally, players noticed some weird audio was playing in the background. Digging through the game's files, you could actually isolate those two audio assets. They sound just like generic video game audio sound effects, right? But there's more here than meets the eye. Or ear, I suppose in this case. Now, we've covered a lot of different decoding methods over the years, but one that I've never had the chance to discuss on the channel is spectrograms. Basically, a spectrogram is a picture of sound. Spectrograms show the frequencies that make up the sound from low to high along one axis and how those frequencies change over time on another axis. And believe it or not, these visualizations of sound actually allow you to hide hidden messages inside of sound waves, not by what you hear, but rather by what you see. And this is exactly what Epic Games did. In fact, it's not the first time they've done it. Back during the meteor days in Season 3, there was a sound that, when run through a spectrograph, would produce this, an image of the Take the L emote, proving yet again that the biggest trolls online are game devs. Anyway, if you run these two audio clips through a spectrograph, you get these images. The first file results in two skulls, skulls that were associated with the visitor and a location known as the Villain's Lair throughout Season 4. Their image should be familiar to regular players of the game because they were broadcast across all the TVs in Fortnite Island leading up to the big rocket launch. The second file, though, is a lot more interesting. It revealed a matrix of letters and numbers divided into two columns. That second column is actually the easier one to decode. It's just the standard notation for a binary representation of a number. And if you're thinking that binary is just a bunch of zeros and ones, so it can't be the case because there's a B in there, well, you're not wrong, there are just a lot of different ways to notate the same thing in binary. Case in point, all of these are exactly the same. They're all the number 37 written in binary. That B near the beginning of the code is just a prefix indicating binary, but it could also go at the end, or written as B-I-N in the beginning. Why are there so many ways to write things in binary? Well, it depends on the context where they're being used, but that's a topic for another day. So anyway, converting all that binary, you get the numbers 6, 9, 8, and 9. That still leaves leaves the first column, and now knowing that the second column is a bunch of numbers, it would make sense for these to be letters in some way, thereby pointing to different locations on the Fortnite map. And wouldn't you know it, but that's exactly what they turned out to be, ASCII codes for different letters of the alphabet. For those of you who don't know, ASCII codes, or ASCII codes as it's properly pronounced, ASCII, SKI, 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 SKI. Oof, the cringe is so real in that one, it was a dad joke mixed with a computer programming joke. Mark it down in the fan wikis, ladies and gentlemen, the ASCII joke is now the newest low of lows when it comes to humor on this channel. Anyway, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, basically just a code used to represent text in computers. Back in the olden days, you had to hold the alt button and type in a number code to get a dot or a tilde or an accent mark that you wanted. Anyway, translating that ASCII code into letters, you suddenly have B6, H9, I8, and I9. And wouldn't you know it, the rocket launched, opened the portal, and rifts started to do crazy things all over the map, where specifically, B6, I8, I-8 and I-9, the locations where they would eventually spit out an anchor, the carriage, and some dinosaur bones. Epic had been teasing what parts of the map would change in advance, and apparently thought that they would do more with H-9, but apparently scrapped that idea. However, the rifts weren't done. They also stole objects from across the map, stealing the signs for Lonely Lodge, the motel in D-2, the noms sign in Retail Row, as well as the iconic mascots of both Durburger and Tomato Town. And with those changes in place, Season 5 Worlds Collide began 
Dan. Now, a lot of Fortnite players probably already know that part of the story, but I'm sure a lot of you loyal theorists actually don't. How do I know that one? Well, a lot of you bought merch, thank you very much by the way, and each time we launch merch, we include a few free gifts for you to thank you for your purchase. This time, it was a free sticker and a pin, and the pin this time around was themed around the Bushman from Fortnite. His legs wobbled back and forth, and I got so many tweets from people being like, I don't know who this is, but it's really cool. Theorists apparently are just too busy playing Ultimate Custom Night to be aware of trends in Fortnite. I'll admit, Fortnite is not the game where I would initially think to find deep lore mysteries like this, but I appreciate it. Good job, Fortnite. Anyway, that's why today's episode exists in large part, to make you guys aware that Fortnite is a game that actually has a lot of deep lore hidden in it too, just as much if not more than most other games available, and it's just as important for us to solve. By the way, that merch I mentioned is almost sold out, so if you've been on the fence about getting it, now is the time to do it if you want cool swag and some bonus gifts, including a pin of a guy who you may or may not recognize, but now at least you'll know who it is. Link is in the description below. Anyway, that's how the season began, but it left us with a really big question. Why did the Rift steal all those signs from across the map? Well, we got our first clue on July 6th when the Twitter account at Salashiloni tweeted out about finding a giant burger in the outskirts of the Mojave Desert in California. Lo and behold, the missing Durr Burger sign had turned up, found alongside a police car that was designed to look like the police cars located in the game. This reinforced the idea that the rifts were connecting Earth and Fortnite Island, a fact that was even further confirmed six days later when the announced trailer for Season 5 dropped, featuring the Durr Burger in the desert and it getting teleported back into the game. The world's colliding theme wasn't about time travel at all, it was instead about the connection between Fortnite and Earth, with the objects from the game coming to the real world and real world objects being sent back into the game. And this is where we start to figure out why this season's theme has been a bit of a non-starter for many players. It's because the bulk of this season's story was never meant to happen in the world of the game, it was meant to happen in our world. Which, if you're spending all your time hunting battle stars and staying focused on your KD ratio, you don't have time to pay attention to the real world, let alone piece together a bunch of clues to solve an IRL ARG. But it's here where the real mystery of Season 5 truly begins. You see, soon after the burger discovery, people calling themselves agents started appearing around the site, setting up a tent and securing the area so that visitors wouldn't be harmed by what they called the anomaly. Inside their tent was a table of books, mostly related to aliens, UFOs, and burgers. Nothing too important there, just a bit of world building to identify these actors as people who are looking to establish a connection between the Durr Burger and the alien visitor who created the rift in the first place. However, what does matter here is that these agents passed out business cards containing a phone number to anyone who spoke to them. 712-380-4091 ahead, you can call it now, the number is still very active, but be warned, what you hear isn't pretty. Mostly because it's just another nasty mystery sound, which means it's time to go back to the spectrogram. And once again, the spectrograph revealed a coded letter number combo, C7. So back to the game! C7 on the map is Greasy Grove, the place where the former Durr Burger disappeared from. So... What? Did it just lead full circle? Yeah, actually, it did lead full circle. But Epic Games had more up its sleeve. They wanted to throw people off track by inserting a clue that looked like it was a dead end. You see, the phone number held not just one audio code, but three. Only the other two were hidden with no clues on how to actually find them. So if you dialed the number a second time and then press three as your extension code without being prompted, it changes the audio tone that plays. You hear the difference? This time the spectrograph decodes to D3, the place on the map where the Durr Burger sign reappeared once Season 5 started. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the incredibly convoluted way we discovered where the Durr Burger sign disappeared from and where it reappeared to on the map. Kinda lame, actually, for all that work, isn't it? Suspiciously lame. To theme an entire season around worlds colliding only to have one burger sign crossover would be kinda dumb, and Epic Games is anything but dumb. In fact, there's still way more to this story here. Dialing the number a third time and pressing six gets you yet another audio signal. Only this time, when you put it through a spectrograph, it yields not a code, but coordinates. Global coordinates, in fact. 48.8539483 Coordinates that, once you plug them into Google Maps, show a very specific location in Paris, France. Visit that location and you find yourself a llama. A loot llama. Or at least you would have found yourself a loot llama, but he was stolen shortly after his appearance. Some men 
just want to watch the world burn. That's right. Going back to the season 5 trailer, we see not just the Durr burger sign disappearing through the rift, but also a loot llama, one that apparently appeared in Paris, making it the second of three items to cross over that we see disappear during the trailer. It seems like we should be on the lookout for the glider, but it wasn't just one llama that was found. On July 9th, another six appeared across Europe. A second one in France, this time on a beach in Cannes, one in Barcelona, Spain, another in Warsaw, Poland, Cologne, Germany, and two in London, England. And that is where we hit a dead end. Now, there's definitely a small community of Fortniteers who knew all this, and who are working tirelessly to get to this point in the mystery across both Reddit and Discord, but they've all quit at this point, assuming that this whole thing is over, that the point of this little ARG epic put together was made to build awareness and hype for Season 5's launch, and now that Season 5 is here, it's all over. But Here's the thing, it's not over. That can't be the case. Not only do you not theme an entire season around an ARG that's meant to expire before the season even begins, you don't send employees around the entirety of Europe dropping off loot llamas without having a plan for them. Remember, Epic Games is based in North Carolina, and it has offices in South Korea, Japan, Seattle, Washington, and the suburbs outside of London. Coordinating a bunch of real-world llamas to appear across multiple European countries on the same day when you don't even have an office in most of those countries is not something that you have employees do unless you have a very specific purpose for it. It's also worth noting that while yes, the NOM sign has reappeared, the Lonely Lodge sign and Motel sign are still out there, somewhere, waiting to be found. And the Tomato Head only just reappeared in the game as of yesterday, except now it's small, and now it's made of stone for some reason. It's really weird. And now, as one final twist, apparently it's Tomato Temple, because why not? Still doesn't mean the mystery's solved, though. This game surprised surprisingly tells its story in very implicit, cryptic ways. It's awesome. You could say it's the Dark Souls of Battle Royale games. Not in terms of difficulty, in terms of how it tells its story. But for hard and fast proof that this quest isn't over, look at this. It's a picture taken by Instagram user Mac underscore Butter who went to the Durr Burger in the California desert. This is a shot of the clipboard from one of the agents roaming around the area, and you'll notice along the top there's the phone number the agents in the desert provided, along with numbers corresponding to the extensions that we had to dial in order to get the spectrograph clues. Three and six. But you'll also notice there's an 8 here. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you dial the number a fourth time and then code in 8, you hear this. Please enter the first few letters of the person's first or last name, followed by pound. A name directory asking for the first few letters of someone's name. Something that, when I first called this number and tested out all the possible extensions before even seeing that this sheet existed, I thought might have been a mistake. But clearly it's not, since it's here on the clipboard provided to us by the guy who is explicitly hired to give out clues for this whole ARG. And this is the mystery that continues to linger for the end of Season 5 World collide. What name are we looking for here, and how do the seven llamas across Europe fit into it? Those are our two dangling threads that have to be related. There are the two pieces that have yet to be solved in this big mystery, and time is running out. Do the European cities lead to letters? Are they associated with a specific name? If they're on a map together, do they spell out something unique? We can absolutely discuss solutions here on this video, but I'll also have us set up a separate Reddit thread and Discord link on the Game Theorist subreddit to give us a more organized nice place to put this all together. But that's it. We have three weeks. Last time I asked for help solving Golden Freddy's name, it was solved by you guys in a day. Can we as a theorist community do it again? We have three weeks and the clock is ticking. Other fun facts, just so we're all working with the same information, the workers giving away the cards at the Durburger site had their agent numbers listed on the reverse side of the card. I tried plugging those numbers into the phone directory, but got nowhere. I even tried them in reverse, since you're supposed to put a hash or pound sign at the end of the number that you're looking to dial in, and if you look at how the numbers are written on their business cards, they start with number signs. So doing it forwards and backwards, nothing either way. That said, if you look at the number keypad, the names can translate to Agent Fort, Agent Knight, and Agent Epic. Cute easter egg, but not helpful for solving this at all. It's also worth noting that the Durburger number has an area code of 712, which leads you to Western Iowa, of all places. Does that mean Fortnite actually takes place in Iowa? No, clearly not. Iowa is not particularly known for its robust islands. But still, that little fact might lead us to some results. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Speaking of getting results, look no further than Dollar Shave Club. No matter what emote you relate to, the club has everything needed to reanimate you in the morning and ensure that you walk out the door looking fresh. Of course, you already know that they deliver the highest quality razors directly to your doorstep. Razors that'll get your face smooth. So smooth, in fact, you'll want a face palm. 
robe so that Palm can be like, whoa, that's a smooth face. And I bet you already know that their prices are lower than you're gonna find anywhere else, leaving you more money to make it rain. Make it rain more V-Bucks, that is. But Dollar Shave Club is more than just razors, they are head-to-toe grooming. Shaving butter, butt wipes, body wash, the only thing they don't have is like, Loss. Personally, my favorite product is that body wash. You dab it on and you are guaranteed to look and smell flippin' sexy. And to give you even more reason for jubilation, Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their daily essential starter set to new members for only $5, which features trial-sized versions of their most popular products. The shave butter, the body wash, the butt wipes. Really? The butt wipes are one of the most popular products? I, I mean, don't get me wrong, that's fine. They are great products, I just... Didn't realize so many people were actively seeking butt cleaning solutions. And of course, the pièce de résistance, the executive razor. Heavyweight, beautiful handle, and a full cassette of their cartridges. This $5 offer, which is an insane value, is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash matpat. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T. -A -A After that first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. So step it up, theorists. Don't take the L, take the D. Dollar Shave Club. Take the D. Probably shouldn't have phrased it that way. Might have gotten the wrong idea. Anyway, rock out with Dollar Shave Club. Click the link in the description and earn yourself some respect on the battlefield of life. Finger guns. Oh yeah, you looking good. Thumbs up.